Hello! This is the third try. Um, why is it the third try? Why not? You know, third time's the charm. Uh, welcome to Niyama Wednesday. I would like to cover two things today. First, I want to talk briefly. <laughs> it's never briefly. I'm always like, it's going to be brief in 10 minutes. I want to talk briefly about what the Niyamas are. Niyamas. Niyama. What the Niyamas are. And I want to talk about how we can apply them or look to them in our day-to-day -day lives. Uh, there are five Niyamas. The Niyamas are one of the eight limbs of yoga. The Niyamas are purity or cleanliness, self-reflection or self-study, uh, discipline, contentment, and surrender or devotion. Now, sometimes people see the surrender, uh, pardon, let's start over at cleanliness and purity. Sometimes those are written literally like you gotta take a shower all the time you gotta eat clean foods you never say mean things you don't have negative thoughts okay sure that's one way to think about it just because we're practicing yoga maybe we maybe our practice is rooted firmly in the physical asana practice maybe we're picking up the niyamas for example or we're, we're studying yogic philosophy we still have emotions. We're still physical stardust meat suits walking around the earth and we encounter stuff and we react to it. There's nothing that says you can't feel your feelings. Okay? So the idea of don't have negative thoughts, that's... <laughs> well, gee, I wish it was... I wish I had known that 40 years ago. I, my whole life would have been easier, right? Negative thoughts are not something that you just arrest with your willpower. Uh, it, 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 I, I digress. Cleanliness. It can be the purity of a thought or intention. It can be the purity of, of a deed. Are you doing something purely because you love someone or because you're trying to get a little something out of it? If you're trying to get something a little out of it, well, that's attachment. How do we know if a thought is clean? How do we know if we have purity in our thoughts and our emotions and if we're not putting attachment on them? Well, that's why we have self-reflection and self-study. And it's not easy and you have to cultivate that. And it takes time to really, to really cultivate that. And as you cultivate it, it will get better. Um, the better it gets, the more you realize you could work on it some more and it never goes away as long as you're human, you'll always have this thing. And it's good. It's a good thing. It's kind of like in its simplest form, really drilling into your practice and considering every aspect, every facet of your asana practice. From the soles of the feet to the tips of the fingers, is every single part of your posture intentional or are there parts of your body that you're just letting go on autopilot? It's an accessible thing to start cultivating self-awareness. Discipline to do that. Do it. All the time. I cannot tell you how many times I have said to a friend, I don't want to deal with all this analysis and contemplation and stuff. I just want to be mad. I see that as a red flag to immediately begin to breathe and start doing some self-analysis and contemplation. And I've gotten a lot better at it. It's taken a period of time. Um, more on that later. So purification of the body, purification of our thoughts, purification of our deeds, right? We want to have pure ideas. Um, we want to watch out for things like jealousy or um, you know, any maligned negative outpouring. Not anger or sadness, but if we're doing things because of insecurities or jealousies or, or those things, that's impure. Um, discipline to, to do that, the discipline to apply self-study and reflection, uh, and the discipline in and of itself, going to yoga every week, you know, multiple times a week is discipline. Contentment. Contentment is interesting. Because on the one hand, we constantly strive to, say, improve the mobility of our body. And then we think about the word contentment. It's like, well, what, what if you're just content with what you have? You could do that. That's a choice, and you can do that. You can also be content to know that what you have can be developed through self-study and purity and discipline. 
that it is going somewhere, right? We're all on a daily practice. We're all on a journey. Every moment of every day, we're going somewhere. Our habits will be built for us, or we can choose those habits. And being content for whatever, whichever road we're on, whether we're getting something or going somewhere or, or trying to fix something, that's a big part of it. Don't wait to be happy. Be happy here and also be happy over there. And then we have surrender. Surrender, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't professionally study the niyamas. My answers are not always correct. Surrender can mean different things. It can mean surrendering control of things you know that you do not control. It can mean surrendering to the idea of being content and happy right here, even though five minutes ago you were thinking you really wanted to change it. Okay. Surrender and contentment are not one and the same. Surrender, you know, contentment is, could be something as simple as your being content with the control of the situation you have now, whereas surrender means you're just, you're just letting it go. You don't need it. And these definitions change for people, right? They change for the circumstances and the people. Uh, you know, every moment of every day, they get, there's a little bit of movement in those, um, in those definitions, just like our asana practice is a little bit different every time we do it. How to apply this stuff? Well, like I said before, just because we practice yoga or, you know, we're all like light and love and gratitude, like as much as we can be, we still have emotions. Still get mad. When I get mad, I try to look at the situation and ask myself questions based on the niyamas. Is this an opportunity for contentment? Is this purity of thought? Is this something that can be, uh, you know, is there, is, is, can I apply my discipline to this somewhere? And it doesn't have to be all five all the time at every every time. Let's use some real low-hanging fruit. Um, say every time you get up in the morning to go to work, you can't find your car keys. Well, you could can, you could you could either be mad every time, you could just you know surrender the idea that no one knows where car keys go, uh, and and then you could just not you know you could be content with that and not be mad about it. Just let it go. You could consider some self-reflection be like well every time I come in the door I throw my keys wherever maybe you could have the discipline to put the keys on a hook right near the door every time you come in and then have the honest self-reflection as to whether or not life is better with this decision after a week of course that's the that's the you know the, that's a simple simple idea but we can start with simple simple ideas that's fine. Nothing says we have to start by rewriting our entire philosophical situation. Okay? So, you have something come up. Maybe it's something that makes you mad or frustrated or sad. You can ask yourself about purity, discipline, contentment, self-reflection, and surrender. Maybe through the niyamas, we can find ways to navigate the, 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 the sometimes uh, complex natures of our existence a little bit more smoothly. I hope this has been beneficial. As always, please uh, comment, uh, like, share, subscribe, you know, hit all the things. And I'll see you on the flip side. Namaste.